Hey, so I don't often talk on here, mainly hands and knob twiddling, but I've had quite a few people ask me about this big Studer console that I've acquired. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to justify it desperately here. Um, why did I need this console? What am I doing with it? Could I have done that with a patch bay, etc., etc.? Well, since getting a big tape machine, like 24 track tape machine, I've really struggled to get things in and out of that tape machine while not having feedback loops and trying to mix from it. And basically you need loads of channels. Um, the added benefit of this being a nice big vintage desk is big beefy transformers and power supply. So it, it does sound really nice. Um, it's been a bit of a cabling nightmare so far, <laughs> but, uh, but the other aspect of it is having been really into modular synth in the last few years, got really used to creative routing and, you know, it's getting frustrated to be honest that I couldn't, unless I brought stuff into the modular, do lots of really interesting routing with all this other fun stuff. Also my piano mics as well, you know, I play a lot of piano and I like to mix the mics and if it takes you two hours to set something up, realistically, you're not gonna get around to playing it, are you? So um, fortunately, came across this, needed some work, but I'm getting there with it slowly. So um, yeah, let me give you a, an idea why it's fun. So it's a little arp going in. If you're not familiar with kind of big consoles, and I say big, this is physically big, but it's nothing like, you know, huge SSLs that you have with a billion channels and a billion groups and buses, but it's got enough for me. Um, and the orcs and the buses essentially means that each of these channels has, on my desk anyway, has eight sends. So these knobs actually are separate outputs. So for instance, one and two go out to reverb, and that's these auto effects. So all of these knobs correspond to different outputs that I've rooted into things like the echo fix is group three. Um, I've got the Cosmos, I'm going to have uh, wonky tape loops for texture, the microcosm, they're all going to be on their own auxes. So on any channel you can just send that to those. And the Otto for instance is coming back on these two channels. And then the tape delay is here and that's fun so obviously I could add reverb to that as well if I wanted. But what's more fun is having loads of channels. The Echo Fix, for instance, as people will probably see in other videos, has four dedicated outputs for the heads, which is really, really fun. So, so I was interrupted by my son here. Uh, so we're gonna pick up the following day. So if I turn the dry signal off the master, these are, The separate heads which is really cool so I've got those kind of ping-ponging between the, the stereo left and right but if you want to get more interesting these are the group buttons and each one of these corresponds to a group over here so you can create submixes so at the moment I've sent those into a submix which has its own aux send so what's really cool is now that's mixed down from the four tape heads through this group and that's being sent via the aux into the auto. Here's my original Juno channel, which I haven't got anything dry at the moment, but I can add those to the group and I can control the sort of mix of the reverb here. Slow those heads down so this is that.
So that's kind of fun. But what's really cool is I've got loads more groups. And because that's coming through the Otto, which are on these faders, I can then send those into another group and I could use another AUX send to go maybe to the wonky tape loop or the microcosm. But also the groups have direct outputs. So I could whack them into the big tape machine or maybe go to digital. Yeah, basically that's the idea is sort of ultimate flexibility. And to be fair, this isn't even, I know it's a physically big desk, but you know, some of those big SSLs are having, you know, 24 groups and tons of masters as well. So I've got two masters here. So that's one of the biggest reasons I wanted this desk was, for instance, if you're recording to tape and you want to hear back from the tape, but you don't want a feedback loop, you create a submix of the master. So on my headphones, I can have, I can select where I'm listening. So basically, you know, you have all the mics and the reverbs being recorded, but you listen to what you're recording and you can sort of choose whether you want to hear the dry signal as well, but you don't get a feedback loop. Uh, I'd probably explain that horribly. But anyway, hopefully that's kind of explained why you'd want a big desk if you have loads of stuff. Um, One thing I forgot to mention, now it's night time, is um, there's a patch bay integrated here which allows you to patch things in. Uh, in my case, that's any of these EQs. And the cool thing is, um, and a compressor, you could patch those into the masters, you can patch those into the groups, submixes you've made, or any of the individual tracks. So, you know, put a compressor on your piano mics or on your synth. Um, if you're doing a mix down back from tape, which is one of the things I forgot to mention, is. I need a lot of channels because I've got 24 tracks to go to the tape machine and 24 tracks to come back. Um, and obviously if I want to mix down from tape and it's got a really great little button here, which is mix down, which when you press that, it will essentially insert all the tape returns. So then you can use the EQ. Um, I also forgot to mention that all of the groups have compressors and limiters and so do the masters too. So you could make a pretty decent mix down here. So use the EQ on all the channels, submix stuff, add effects, use the auxes, which I talked about earlier, and then, yeah, submix some stuff, limit some things, compress some stuff, have a bus compressor, and then use any of these effects as well, or use it as a master chain on the master if you like. Um, yeah, it should be good. Uh, I haven't done any of the wiring for this yet. Oh, 